Yo, Finn. I'm proud of you. I love you. you. Well, you can see it in the episode. Bubblegum. Prince Bubblegum made him out of candy and then poured some chemicals on his face. <laughs> <laughs> Started screaming. <laughs> uh, I like I like the episodes that sort of um, explore like the the bro friendship between Finn and Jake. I really like that. But the one that's coming to mind is one where they're really barely in it with the, the snow monster and the fire. Yeah, fire oh, that's, 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 that's one of my favorites. And I was I was like, this show is really good because you can do episodes like this, and yeah. it still works. And you have Finn and Jake in the background against this invincible iron or ice suit that can't move. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Uh, my favorite ones to work on are usually ones that have food because Andy usually lets me draw food when it shows up. Uh, I think my favorite one recently was like Web Weirdos because like that explosion with, that was like, you know, was, like amazing. I like anything really like gnarly. Yeah, it shows up. That came out of nowhere. That was yeah. awesome. <laughs> Food. Was there a food one coming up with like food people? There's the hot dog monsters. More yeah, that was the finale. Yeah. Dad's dungeon. Okay. Yeah. There's. There will be more food in the show though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey beer. What? Beer. <laughs> um, I'm curious to hear what you all think about this, but. Adventure Time has really kind of transcended any kind of demographic and is really affecting, you know, a lot of people love it from little kids to guys in their 20s like me. So I'm just kind of curious, like, why do you think this show has kind of transgendered age groups? Um, I've got my answer, but what, Bob, what do you think? I don't know. It's something I think about a lot because I try to make work that kind of, like, you know, works on all levels to in all ages. And I think... For me, it just like it always comes down to like sincerity. I don't think it's like a mean show, and the humor is never mean. And um, and I think that works for like you know, young people and old people. And I think there's just some there's just some sort of like you know traditional storytelling happening, you know, on the most basic level that you know. And um, so so I think usually when those things are happening, and nothing's trying to be too smart or too sort of insider or just too pitching to one sort of age group. It, it tends to magically come together, but it's special when it does, and yeah, it's definitely happening on the show. I think. Do you have a theory? I think it's I think it's because it's a bunch of adults making it, and we're all well, weirdos. <laughs> uh, does that make sense? <laughs> but I like everyone's kind of like taking things. I I don't know what we but like a lot of things I love on the show were things I would have loved when I was a kid, but we're just kind of approaching it from a different viewpoint, you know? What do you say? Adult weirdos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm glad that people like it. It's nice. But I think when we're, when we're writing it, we're just writing it to make ourselves laugh, though, I think. Mm -hmm. And I guess, in, you know, luckily makes other people laugh. Uh, but I think that's what, I mean, that's all we're doing. We're not sitting down and being like, okay, how do we make every demographic <laughs> enjoy this? Yeah, we didn't do that. Yeah, okay. uh, someone was like, oh, was it hard to write you know, an all-ages comic book? And I was like, I, I didn't really think of writing it that way. I just wrote something and you know, made what you thought was good. And I guess the trick to all ages is just make sure the characters keep their tops on. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they don't wear any clothes at all. Like yeah. puppies. There's a lot of princesses. Hot dog princess, puppy space princess. Right, they're naked. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I hadn't thought of that. Let's talk about the plastic bag and Monkey Space Princess. Her clothes that she wears because she lives in the woods and eats garbage. Well, we, got, we got a lot of like funny notes on that. I don't. It hasn't. I don't think it's aired yet, but. Yeah, there's a big Monkey Space Princess episode coming up uh, where she wants to write a book. <laughs> She's always dreamed of becoming an author. <laughs> She wears trash for her clothes. Because <laughs> she ran away from home. <laughs> but she's doing okay in the woods. Turtle Princess visits her and brings her stuff. Huh? Oh, sorry. I've been touching uh, Steve's leg with my leg under the table. <laughs> it's really warm. <laughs> I, I thought it was the chair for a while, and I was like, oh, 
no, no. no. <laughs> We're touching legs. <laughs> He was raising a hand for a while. Yeah. Beard. <laughs> um, you featured uh, the waving snail in, I think, every one of your episodes, right? Is it still continued in season four? Yeah, it's still going. Yeah. There's a secret, if you all know, there's a secret little waving snail in, every, in one scene in every episode. It's like a Where's Waldo thing. I thought that was fun. He's in the comics, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, you mentioned how Adventure Time appeals to all demographics. Has there ever been a time where you put in uh, maybe like a concept or a situation and then people go, kids, that's not for kids? You don't remember? I can't remember. I mean, I'm sure we have. Yes. <laughs> uh, but who's the one that calls that shot? Like, standards. standards. There's a group of people, and I think they live in Atlanta, and they tell us when we can't do stuff. We couldn't say, we couldn't say murder in the Ghost oh, yeah. Princess episode. Yeah. We had to say Myrtle Myrtle. We had to say <laughs> Usually their notes actually, we have to be more creative to get around them, and it ends up being better. <laughs> yeah, there's also a lot of moiter. We had to yeah. change. <laughs> Pretty silly. Ski, yeah. ski bopped. Ski bopped. <laughs> I mean, Jesse and Naka came up with all those words. And, uh, they're really funny words, but I was so frustrated when we can say murder, and we can't say moiter. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh. Like the standards notes always dry, like make me feel crazy, but they always make the funniest anecdotes like for what we can and can't do. What was the one from the Hitman that you guys had to change? I feel like there's, I remember there was something that. I remember. I remember. Boing, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesse wrote a scene where you would say it. Yeah, someone got kicked in the balls or whatever. I said ball. I wrote originally wrote. Someone got kicked in the balls, in the balls, in the balls over and over again. And then, uh, and then uh, they were like, "You can't say balls. You gotta say boingaloids." No, no, no. no. no it, it was longer than What? It was more than. It was like we changed it to nuts. Oh yeah, nuts. and then we changed it to cashews. <laughs> Uh, and then I was like, okay, boing loins. Boing loins aren't anything. We can say it. And it turned out, I think boing loins was the funniest thing anyway. It is pretty funny. Someone got hit in the nuts. Hit in the nuts. 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 Peace out. <laughs> you laughing at boing lines? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he says it like five times in the episode. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering if there's any challenges in translating Adventure Time to comics from uh, from an animated show. I had to be careful because um, I wanted the comic to work even if you hadn't seen the show, so we could go from the show to the comic and the comic to the show. And I was like, man, Jake transforms a lot, but this is a static page. So the first uh, couple issues, the transformations sort of show it happening a lot, so you can see what's happening. It's not just suddenly, he's a plane in this panel, and surprise, <laughs> you can do that. Uh, so that was tricky. But also, it's hard, you can't do songs in the paper, there's no music. But so I had them rapping in, in issue three, because you can rap without music. So those are really the only, only two things, I think. That's cool. Rap music and, uh, and Jake transformations. Am I drinking your water, Michael? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, against the wall. Hi. Well, um, I just wanted to mention uh, there's an episode in season three with the Tough Tude and Baby Dance. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of obsessed with that song. Yeah. And I wanted to know if anyone else is obsessed with that song and where it came from. We got one here, one in the back. Yeah. 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 Got a few people who also are obsessed with it. I wrote that song. What was the last question? Uh, where it actually came from? Oh yeah, I wrote that song. No, no, I'm a tough baby that can dance like a man. I can shake a my fanny. I can shake a my can. I'm a tough tootin' baby. I can punch at your buns. Punch at your buns. I'm gonna punch all your buns. If you're an evil witch, I will punch you for fun. <laughs> I think I wrote that. Uh, 
thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think I wrote that in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, are there any? Um, are there any problems translating Adventure Time into other languages, or is that not a barrier you've had to sort of jump yet? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't do that. <laughs> you translate boing -oings. Oh yeah, boing boings. <laughs> the guy in the orange. Orange. The guy in the orange. With the black hat. Oh. Uh, are there any plans for any more uh, Fiona and Kate episodes? Yeah, there's one coming up that will feature Marshall Lee. Yeah, you get to see him. He sings. Rebecca wrote songs for it and a rap. Y'all love rap? <laughs> Glasses. Uh, a lot of people have mentioned their love of this song. Can you just mention it again? There can be a rap in an upcoming episode. Has there ever been a thought of like, putting together an Adventure Time album? Yeah, every convention I go to, someone wants an album, and I go, yeah, I want an album too, and I've been asking people, but, I mean, I can't do anything. I just ask people to please help me at Cartoon Network, and then uh, so it happens, and I think there's there's progress being made, but it seems like it's been years since. Oh yeah, then you can get them online, probs. Like on YouTube's, look them up, or I don't know. But yeah, I want to release an album. I want to just write a whole album for Marceline and her dad to sing. Uh, I think that'd be cool. Martin Olson plays is Olivia Olson's dad. They're, her dad in the cartoon is her dad in real life, um, and they're cool people and they write music together anyway. So I thought it'd be cool to do a whole album with them sometime soon. Arm. <laughs> uh, who's responsible for choose goose? <laughs> uh, that was something that my friend Pat McHale and I came up with. We spent six hours uh, rhyming uh, together, <laughs> and then we cut him out. We, he was for the first one of the first episodes in Kyridian, and we uh, we had this whole joke where Choose Goose was in it, and like Finn's trying to get up this mountain, he's trying to get to the top. There's a thing, something up there that he needs in Kyridian, and he he's going through all these trials, and, and so and at one point. He, he goes and comes across Choose Goose, who's like playing three card Monty with juice, and he's like, "Choose a juice, you cannot lose." Like really bad rhymes, and uh, and it wasn't a trial. He was just like he just wanted them to try some juice, and, uh, and they were like, "No, this is weird." And he's like, "Just choose a juice, uh, you cannot lose. I'm Choose Goose," uh, and they're like, "No, uh, no way." And they left, and he's like, "No." Uh, and we had to cut it all out. Anyway, that's. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, have you ever decided to? Uh, sorry, I'm gonna collect my thoughts. But have you ever decided to do a, a full musical episode, like once more with, with feeling that sort of uh, whole musical um, narrative type of thing? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> We've gotten close with what was missing. Rebecca wrote a bunch of songs for that, but I'm not really into musicals. <laughs> It sort of works against the sincerity when you're singing your every word, right? <laughs> How can you be like, it's, gonna, it's, it's, it's lame. It's going to be like, Princess Pokemon, I love you so much, and I gotta tell you, I gotta express my feelings for you. <laughs> then you're too young for me, you're too very young. I don't know. Uh, no, we got into an argument about musicals once, I think. Like, you don't like musicals, right? Yeah. You want to get into it again? No. <laughs> Uh, the, yeah, just pluck them out of the, uh, the, 
we uh, in the writers' room, we just pitch, uh, we just tell each other about our day to day stuff, and then, or sometimes we'll play writers' games. We had one recently where we brought all the all the storyboard artists and writers into a room and, and play these these sort of exquisite corpse games where you you fold a paper three times hot dog style, and then uh, one person writes, you have two minutes to write the the first the first act. And I have this really annoying timer app on my phone that goes go, <laughs> and then stop. Uh, and then we do that, and then you pass it to the next person, and then you pass it to the next person, and then we get these uh, a ton of crazy ideas that usually devolve into boner jokes. And, <laughs> um, so we don't use those, but <laughs> that's how it happens, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. Hey, man. What's up? Um, don't film me. Um, who can do the, the best? Don't, don't. Yeah, don't film me. Okay. Don't feel me laughing. <laughs> um, who can do the best beatbox here? I can. Yes. Can yeah. <laughs> It's unanimous. Unanimous yeah. pen can do the beatbox. Yeah, I'm not like Can we get a sample? <laughs> wow. Too many times you get a note saying the scale of that. We uh, Phil Renda just did a, a, a wallet design for Paquetto with Adventure Time, and he drew butts all over everything, really big. And I was like, "Haha, that's amazing! Yeah, let's do that!" And then we got a note saying there's but too many butts, and he scale them back. <laughs> and I was like, "Why?" And they were like, "Well, some people who want to sell Adventure Time stuff don't want to have butts all over there." <laughs> I'm like, "All right, well, it's boring." Red shirt. Uh, yeah, so how did you guys decide on Morse code for uh, or monochrome corn to kind of contrast Korean? <laughs> that was just Adam Muto. He's a funny guy. He's a weirdo. He thought it was funny. It is funny. I think horses have done that before, right? That's how people have communicated. You have the count. The count. They would be specifically trained for it. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Horses that can count with their feet. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I know. It, I noticed in the uh, 
Five Short Griggles episode when Mar when sorry when Princess Bubblegum was making the cheese, she did like the big Wallace and Gromit smile. Yeah. She was looking at the cheese. Yep. What are some of your other like really big inspirations for animation that you find like that inspire what you do in Adventure Time? You want to go around? Mike, let's start. Inspiration? That's brought up. Oh, mostly, I read a lot of comics, so mostly comics. Are like Which Hideshi ones? Like Hino and Charles Schultz. And I like a lot of Japanese horror comics, like Junji Ito. I like, yes. uh, yeah, and other things. I like Mark Bell a lot. I can't think of that many for some reason. There's no comics around me this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the comics? Um, I have, uh, I think it's issue five coming up. Uh, there's a wall in front of Jake, and he has to get over it, so he walks over like that keep on trucking Robert Crumb thing. <laughs> I was happy to put that in. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, like, I like a lot of comics. Um, all the comics, basically. I just, I just consume them, and they gestate inside of me. <laughs> and then I give birth. <laughs> <laughs> That's the creative process. <laughs> uh, I read. I, mean, I like uh, like Dungeon. I like a lot of the, like French adventure comics. Um, play a lot of video games. But um, yeah, just uh, rereading uh, the Princess Bride right now, which is giving me lots of <laughs> lots of. Like, talking about I was just I've been talking about Princess Bride a lot lately. Like uh, I'm reading it for the second time, and I, it, it's given me lots of cool ideas and storytelling. Um. <coughs> Uh, I like Jesse Moynihan's comic forming. Yes. That's great. It's definitely one of the best things. Table 153. Table 153. <laughs> Jesse Moynihan. All right. Andy Rusina. Jesse, what are your favorite things? Like cartoons? It's anything that inspires you. Oh. Um, I guess I'm inspired by the film, the films of Rene Lelou a lot. Uh, he did Fantastic Planet. And, um, and then probably, um, I don't know, old Benny Boop cartoons, <laughs> and uh, uh, Jodorowsky films. <laughs> yeah, I, I did a cartoon when I was in college where I wanted to, I was going to animate myself making out with different cartoon girl characters. <laughs> <laughs> and I started with Velma, and I, it was like the camera was spinning around us, and we were like, uh, and there were hearts going up in the background. And I was going to go through like uh, all the G.I. Joe girls, and then I was going to get to Betty Boop, and I was going to see her from far away, and her head was going to be like, kind of like, I was like, okay, and then I'd like get up close to her, and her head was going to be like this, this big, and I was going to, ah! and, then, uh, <laughs> and then it would cut to the next like girl, and like, whatever. There was actually, uh, sorry, there was a, there's a, did you ever see that cartoon in Humanoids? Yeah. From the 80s? Yeah. Uh, it was about monsters living underground uh, that were coming up to attack the Earth, and these team of um, dudes had to stop them, but they were like powerless to stop these monsters, basically. And there was um, an episode that when I was a young kid that I always like, wa wanted to be able to recapture this feeling, which was this bad guy and his assistant uh, were escaping prison, and they were running over this swamp filled with toxic waste. and the, um, the dude's assistant falls into the toxic waste and he's like, I can feel my flesh melting off my body. <laughs> and then uh, and when I was a kid, I was like five. I was like, whoa. Uh, I wanted to throw up. I was so disturbed by this cartoon. And, uh, and then I was like, man, that's the... But later, when I grew up, I was like, that was the best thing I'd ever seen on kids television. <laughs> yeah. So I like that feeling. It's definitely, sorry to rob you, Bob. <laughs> It's definitely something that I think we all strive for on the show is to make uh, episodes that are impactful, like on the memories of little children. Like, if, I want like when the when the when uh, Bubblegum was young, too young, too young, and she was and uh, Finn and her kissed, and then after that episode, uh, Frederick had like a call in thing. We could call in and give your feedback, and one of the messages was of a little girl crying, and she was like, "I can't believe." <laughs> I don't want to mock her, because I thought it was awesome. Like, I love her, and I, uh, I was like, ah, oh, yes, hey, we did it. We made her cry. <laughs> uh, I was like, ah, oh, I'm so happy. Like, it could, only because, like, it was that effective. Like, that episode was so powerfully emotional, especially to, you know, younger, younger kids. And, uh, 
I think that's cool. Yeah, to really like punch punch people through the TV and, <laughs> and your emotions, you know, punch them right in the brain. I think that's neat. Uh, Bob, what's your inspiration? show? Yeah, um, I think with me, like I've always watched cartoons, and I think like with you guys, like um, there's like there's probably like the similar thing there. Like there are certain things that you sort of like watched or read when you were like young that that like left an imprint on you. And I think for me there are always things that were just like slightly off that weren't really true to like what our sort of everyday experiences are. And and it kind of made you sort of figure out what this sort of universe is about and how things work. Because you're still kind of figuring things out. And so like things that that are like a little bit scary, like I kind of like remember liking a lot when I was a kid because it made you feel like a little scared. But but at the same time you knew you were safe and stuff. So. So anyway, I mean, yeah, just like a lot of weird stuff. Um, like, I'm a big fan of the Fleischer cartoons, of course. I think everybody is in animation. Um, and I like the really early Disney stuff. Like, like one, of my favorite Disney, one of my favorite Disney films would have to be, like, you know, Pinocchio. It's just like, and I know people that, like, either, like, love or hate that. And it's because, like, it either scared them when they were a kid and they ran from the room or they were just like, this is really freaky. Like, he just turned into a donkey, you know? And, like, <laughs> it's not cool. But, it, but, you know, but it was cool. Um, I don't know, when I was a kid. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. And, uh... Yeah, I mean nothing, nothing too profound. I don't think. I always, I was like, you know, Roald Dahl. All the, like, yeah, yeah, like all the stuff that just sort of like put you in a perspective as a kid, where like you were kind of in control, but not really in control, or trying to fight with adults and trying to sort of figure out, sort of what the rules of the world were. Um, you know, Shel Silverstein. Um, I always like Dr. Seuss too. Just things that are a little bit twisted. Shel Silverstein's got some good albums, man. Mm -hmm. With him singing, he's great. He's weird. We tried to get the rights to, uh, what was it, uh, Boiling Sue? That's what that, <clears throat> that Dad's Dungeon, did you see that one somewhere maybe? The, it's the one where Jake builds a dungeon for Finn. And it was, it was, it was all going to be around uh, Boiling Sue, like Jake had a tape of it, or Jake's dad had a tape of it, and so he wanted to make this dungeon so that Finn could grow up strong, just like that song. Uh, uh, I was going to get Thurp to sing it, Thurp was the voice of Flapjack. He was gonna be like, I got the old flap tag. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Jake was gonna have this tape deck and be like, it's Johnny Cash song, here, I'll play it for you. And it's Flapjack going, uh, <laughs> boy name Steve's saying that. <laughs> what? Yeah, I can't remember the lyrics. <laughs> it's just like a story, it's not yeah. like a song. Yeah. <laughs> Andy? Uh, like Miyazaki, Mobius, uh, that cartoon Star Blazers, I don't know if it's on Instant Watch, really awesome, like, weird sci-fi from the late 70s cartoon, but uh, yeah, stuff like that. What about Twilight Zone? Do you guys like Twilight oh, yeah. Zone? Yeah, I'm Twilight like, Zone is huge. I'm, yeah, like, I love Twilight Zone. Like things that are just weirdly like circular, just come back on themselves, and I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. Do y'all want to yell some stuff and I can record it on my iPhone? Yes. Uh, say booty, booty clap. Booty clap dance up and down in your pants. <laughs> Booty clap dance up and down in your pants. Booty clap dance up and down in your pants. Booty clap dance up and down in your pants. Booty clap dance up and down in your pants. Booty clap dance up and down in your pants. Booty clap dance up and down in your pants. Booty clap dance up and down in your pants. Booty clap dance up and down in your pants. Booty clap dance up and down in your pants. Booty clap dance up and down in your pants. Dance up and down the pants. Booty clap, dance up and down the pants. Booty clap, dance up and down the pants. Good job, everybody. That was like the animation. Where? What time is it? The cinematography on that was brilliant. Uh, it's four seventeen. Yeah. Be your new ringtone. Yeah, I can do that. I know. I looked up how to make ringtones. Um, for the iPhone, you have to do some stuff. You gotta, you gotta change file names, M4V or something. I don't know. You can all can Google it. <laughs> yes. Um, do you guys work with an overseas animation studio, or is a lot of work done domestically? It's overseas. There's two studios. Um, Same room. It's such okay. a free flowing show. I imagine there's a lot of like very specific direction. Um, do you ever get some like hilariously wrong takes back from overseas? No, no, not not hilariously wrong. 
<laughs> I wish. I love Hilariously Wrong. That's my favorite thing. Like, I grew up watching Deke cartoons, which are all Hilariously Wrong. Uh, Hammer Man, Hammer, MC Hammer had his own cartoon. And Hammer Man, where he had yeah, magic shoes. shoes. Yeah. I could talk to him. That's not open with the rap about a shoe. Like, he's got these magical shoes. <laughs> where me cannot lose. Because it wraps up to explain the premise of MC Hammer's cartoon show. Is I don't think he did it himself. Which is like a villain rapper because he didn't want to rap about himself.